In this video, I will show how you can add an impact wave onto everything. I will also share a little extra tip at the end, so stay tuned. Let's get straight to it. When you open up Blender, import the surface you want. If you don't have anything, you can just add a plane or you can import like literally anything. For example, I imported this side of the building. Let's go to render view. It's just um, like some glass planes and some metal beams between. Also make sure to apply the rotation and scale with control A and then rotation and scale. Okay, so after that, select it and make sure it has enough subdivision, go into edit mode. And if it has less than this, um, make sure to subdivide it or you can also add a subdivision surface modifier. Now go into the geometry nodes tab up here and click on new geometry node system. Okay, now we have just these two. So this is the input and this is the output and everything we change in between here um, changes the geometry of the surface you imported. So first of all, add a set position node. With this node, you can manipulate the position of certain polygons or the whole object, um, depending on what you want. But we just want to move the polygons where the wave should be. So we want to move them out. For that, first of all, let's add in a wave texture. So this is the base of our node system. So this is what generates the wave and with this node, we can also animate the wave. Okay, so when we plug this wave texture into the position, everything like disappears or looks weird depending on the geometry you have. So first of all, we have to combine this with the position node. Search for position and add it in and combine it with a vector math node. So now we got our geometry back, but it all looks kind of weird because we haven't told the geometry how to distort the wave, in which direction, on which, on which axis, and so on. So let's get into that. For that, add in a combine node. Combine X, Y, Z. And now you can already see, depending on where we plug it in, it looks different. So this now depends on your mesh. So I have a vertical um, wall of a building and I want the impact wave to go out on the Y axis. So I plug it in into the Y axis. But if you're not sure, you can also test it. So if I now plug it into the X, um, it doesn't extrude anything out. Same if I plug it into the set and only if I plug it into the Y. But if you apply it to the floor, you have to plug it into the set. But yeah, you see it depending on if it extrudes. Okay, so this still looks very weird. And to fix that, first of all, we have to change up the wave texture. So we don't want bands but we want ring, we want a ring wave that is going outwards. Then also change um, the axis to the same axis of, as you have connected here. So that would be Y for me. And then it still looks weird and that is because there are now like thousands of wave because the texture is too, too small. Change the scale and scale it down maybe to 0 0.01. And now you can already see we got something going on, but it's still a very wide wave and we want to control this also. So for that, add in a color ramp and plug it in between the combine and wave texture. And then if we crank the black value up, you can see what's happening. Uh, maybe to something like 0 0.99. And now we already have our wave. But the problem now is we also have other waves. And if we just want to isolate this one, uh, what you can do is you can just make the texture smaller. Maybe something like 0 0.002. 
but this really depends on your like on the size of your object um now you can also see that the wave got bigger so let's change this to 0 0.999 Okay, so if your wave is also very far out, you can change the phase offset to bring it back in again to see a little bit better. So what we're gonna do next is we also want to control how big the wave is, so how far it extrudes outwards. And for that, let's add in a math node, plug it in between the color ramp and the combine node and set it to multiply. Now, if you increase or decrease this value, it will increase or decrease the size of your impact wave. So I will set it to something like 0 0.75. But yeah, you can experiment with your own and depending on the style and the scene, you can change this. So something you have probably noticed is that the wave starts right where the origin point is. So if we, like it starts right there. So if we wanna change that, let's copy the position node and add in another vector math node. Plug the position into add and the vector into the vector of the wave textures. And now with these three values, we can control where the wave should be placed. You can see it right now, you can slide it up to the right. The first one is the X value and the last one is the set value because I want to move it on the X axis and the set axis. This depends again how you rotated your surface. And yes, this is already the basic setup. Okay, so to animate it, let's go to the first frame and change the phase offset so that the wave is really small. Then make a keyframe, go forward in time, maybe to frame 100 and change the phase offset again so that it goes outwards or inwards, whatever you want, and then make the keyframe again. And now when you play it, you already get the animated wave. Okay, so an additional thing you can do is if you maybe added it to a plane, like to maybe a dirty floor that isn't as smooth, um, you get a really smooth impact wave with this one. Or maybe you wanna exaggerate the roughness of the floor with the impact wave. So what you can do is go back to geometry nodes and then add in another vector math node, put it on top, then add in a noise texture, um, copy the combine node, and drag the position node back here. So we're gonna give it some distortion, but only on the wave. Um, and we do that with noise texture. So plug in the position to the vector, then the factor to the combined set. This again depends how your, um, how your mesh is rotated. And then plug the vector into the vector math node and change it to multiply and plug this into the offset. So now you can see when we change this value maybe to one, um, you can see the noise texture. So let's decrease the scale a little bit and maybe increase the detail. Yeah, you can play around with this until you like it. Okay, but let's say we only want this noise texture on the wave. So what we can do is just take the color ramp and plug it in to the vector. So now we can see you have a little bit more of a rough wave, which is not so smooth, which can be amazing if you maybe wanna do a floor ground impact wave or a stone impact wave or whatever. And yes, you can also add a math node um, in between the color ramp and the multiply and switch to multiply. And now you can also control the strength and play around with this. 
And yes, so this is the basic setup for the impact wave. And let's continue to the extra tip. If you want to have multiple waves on one object, um, you can just copy all these nodes with Shift D, then delete the position node and where the position was, plug in the add vector and plug the new add vector into the set position. And now let's change the phase offset. As you can see, we have two waves. You can also change the position on this one so that it intersects or whatever. And you can repeat this step how many times you want. For example, like this, let's plug the bottom one in again and the top one into the bottom. And now we have three waves. And yes, so this is a cool tip to know. If you have too many waves, the note tree can get very messy. But yes, I hope this helps. And with that, we're already at the end of this tutorial. If you have some problems with geometry nodes or you want to spare some time, you can get the already finished project file right now on Gumroad. And I hope you could learn something and enjoyed the video. I hope you can implement these impact waves into your own scene. And yes, also check out my Patreon for more tutorials and breakdowns and make sure to comment on what I should do a tutorial next. Also like the video if you liked it and disliked it if you didn't. And yes, subscribe to not miss anything in the futures and I wish you all a great week.